Okay, so this is our brush hog. Um, what's left of it. I really did a number on this this summer and um, I haven't had a chance to fix it. So we haven't really been mowing since this happened. This is what happens when you really use your brush hog to its fullest potential. Anyway, so I am going to fix this. Um, first thing I need to do is try and get this thing flipped over because I can't work on it like this. If you've ever tried to lift one of these, it's very heavy. This is the underside of our brush hog. This was attached on there. Then it kind of just busted off quite fantastically, actually. So this is just a rusty mess right now. Um, it doesn't appear that I that I bent my gearbox or anything like that. So I'm just first thing I'm going to do is just kind of soak down this nut on top, because I'm gonna have to break that out. And then, then I'll have to get in there somehow. It hasn't been that long since I've last repaired this brush hog, but when I last repaired it, I had that uh, plate welded back together. And I guess the welding just didn't, didn't hold up that long. I didn't expect it to. It was just, it was a cheap repair at the time. That repair cost me, oh, Maybe 50 bucks. This repair is going to cost me about $150. So, um, you know, I don't think the time that I saved or the money was worth it the first time around. This time I'm actually going to put on a whole new plate. Um, wow, some of these are loose. I'm going to give this thing a good once over as I, as I do this so that I can make sure that these bolts are nice and tight. Because uh, some of those are loose, that's not that's not a good thing. But uh, the first step is going to be to remove this bolt, um, and I've sprayed it down with PB blaster. But I really want that PB blaster to get up in there and work some magic for me. So I'm going to let it sit for a little bit, just kind of soak down in there. So when I try and turn that main bolt, um, my, my gearbox is going to spin. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a crowbar and I'm going to try and get this in a position so I don't hurt anything. So I'm going to try to avoid hurting my universal joint. Now that should give me enough tension to go ahead and loosen my bolt without hurting the universal joint. And so now I'm going to try and remove this pin, which keeps the bolt from coming unscrewed. I'm 
まわけんまわわけんまわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわわ Gonna soak it the best I can in penetrating oil. If you watched my last video, getting this off was a royal pain in the butt.、Um, I'm gonna refer you to that video on how to get this thing off because this time my entire plate's broken, so I'm gonna have to go about this a different way. Okay, so when it comes to removing these things, heat helps a lot. So, heat will expand the metal, and then as it pulls back apart,、uh, as it contracts and gets colder, it'll actually crack out where it's、uh, rusted together. So, Now, I'm going to let that kind of cool off for a little bit. As it cools, I'm just kind of hitting it with a little more penetrating oil. So, I finally got this piece off. Ooh, it's still hot. A little bit of heat goes a long way.、Um, what bothers me here is that these bolts are loose. 
I want to see if I can get these to tighten down. It's real important that our gearbox stay attached and not move around too much uh, while this is spinning. Having three loose bolts is not cool. So let me see if I can find the right size. Seem like they're pretty big. Yeah, they're pretty big. The annoying thing about working on this stuff is not having the right size equipment. So I have it just an adjustable wrench and a tire iron. I'm trying to do this with. It appears to be working all right. Got it too tightened down now. Okay, so yesterday I ran into a few issues with the brush hog repair. The first one was obviously getting the old stump pump off. That was proved to be pretty difficult. I tried everything and then ultimately turned back to the method of using heat to get it off. I'm hoping that I didn't wreck the seals in my gearbox. Um, I also had an issue with a bolt that was stripped. These tightened down pretty good, but this one here was pretty stripped, so I had to cut that out. That was a bear to cut out. I found another bolt to fit in there. I'm hoping that bolt holds in there pretty good. I just tried to remove it. I had bought another bolt to put in there, but I couldn't get that thing off. So I'm hoping that means that it's gonna stay in there. Um, I don't want this to move, um, if at all possible, while I'm operating my brush hog. The next issue was that I didn't have the right size wrench for the the uh, new blades to the brush hog, but I'm gonna go ahead and put those on so that I can put my new stump bump on and I'll show you how those go onto the stump bump. Um, just so that if you're if you're curious, there, there should be a way to get your old bolts off. Mine are pretty well stuck on there. I like the old bolts better because they had cotter pins to hold the nut on my bolt. I can't get those those nuts off the bolts. So they're, they're just gonna stay the way they are and I'm gonna use the new ones that I bought. So these bolts are rather simple design. They have a locking washer and a nut. And basically the blade is gonna go on here. Let me grab a blade. I'm using king cutter blades on our house brush hog. So the blade goes on here and it spins freely. And if you notice the underside of the bolt is flat. So the way that you can tighten the bolt down is it has a little, I don't know what you call that, but it's, it's just a little piece that sticks up there. And the stump bump has a little nook for it. So you slide it in and once you get it in there, the bolt won't turn, and then you can tighten down your your washer on top. Now, because these are spinning underneath my brush hog at high velocity, um, it's real important to me to get these things tightened down as much as possible. Uh, they will kind of rest in place, which will eventually help you out as well. 
I like to make sure these things are really tight. And then the blades, they kind of just swivel on there. Some coil on there. Get in there. That nice and coiled. Now we have our nut to go on there. This one's gonna be too big. Yeah. So we're gonna have to go with this one. So to make sure I get this good and tight, I'm going to again take a crowbar and stick it down to the yoke. That'll give me the ability to really crank down on this. As far as it's wanting to go, but it's not quite far enough. And the final step to this procedure is reinserting your cotter pin. I'm hoping that takes it. Again. Do need to get that tightened down just a tad bit more. That should do it. Okay, so I have successfully taken my brush hog from this to that, and um, now I am going to flip it back over and change the oil in the gearbox so it's all ready to go. And I'm hoping that this holds up pretty well. The blades are a heck of a lot sharper than my old one. You know, King Cutter makes some good blades, so it actually made me Pretty thrilled to know that the King Cutter blades would fit on this brush hog. I'm just curious to see how all this works when I'm done with it. Hopefully I didn't ruin the seals in the gearbox by applying too much heat, but the landscape torch was the closest one I had. Oh, the only one I could find actually. Gosh, that's heavy. Everything seems to be working all right. We'll uh, hook it up to the brush hog or the tractor and uh, take it for a spin.